All right, thank you to my team for putting that together. In fact, today, Moneyline with Nancy is three years. That's Moneyline with Nancy is three years on this channel. So I want to say thank you to everyone, you know, to everyone, to Africa Independent Television, to Dark Communications, to my crew. When I mean my crew, I don't just mean my young people crew that you see sometimes on the show if I'm not there. I also mean those at the back end, my directors, my cameramen, the light crew, editing, everybody. It takes a village. I mean village. -o. I'm not joking. It takes a village to put a show together. And Money Line with Nancy has, is three today on this channel. Not talking about money show because I was just talking earlier with Dr. Uh, 13 years so far from 2007 till now. So I've been doing this for about 13, 14 years or so. Yeah, about 13 to 14 years consistently. And he did ask me if I don't get tired, where does the strength come from? I really don't know where the strength comes from, but perhaps I'll give glory to God. So thank you everyone uh, for being part of our journey. It's still a journey, it's not a destination. Let's see where we'll continue to go. And we'll hope and pray that we'll continue to have the strength, not just to educate, to inform you, but to be the number one live business television uh, program in the country. And of course, across the continent. So thank you all, especially to our fans, to our viewers, a lot of you that record, even when you are not watching, you record it, you come back, you watch, <laughs> you know, you follow us on social media. A lot of your comments, I see them. Sometimes when you see me, oh, Nancy, your show is like a school. Oh, you're like a teacher, like, you know. But thank you all for being part of our story so far. So welcome, doctor. And thank you too, because at least, uh, Money Line with Nancy is also successful because of the pool and the repertoire of guests that we've had. Like my uh, crew said, over 750 shows in three years. Mm -hmm. So if I put like 14 years of my work on business television, you can imagine how many shows I've done. So thank you, Doctor, also for being uh, thank you, Nancy. a guest on the show. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Happy New Year. We haven't seen this yet. Yeah, we haven't. And happy birthday anyway. Yes, happy birthday yes. for the show. <laughs> <laughs> so happy New Year. How has your year been? How was your holiday? It was quick. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. It was really quick. Very, 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 very quick. And yeah. I was like, I didn't want the holidays to end. But I didn't want to say it. So it will not sound <laughs> as if I'm, in, I'm lazy. You didn't want to get back to work. Yeah? Yes, I didn't really want to get back to work. Seriously. <laughs> I didn't want the holiday to end very quickly. I wanted to like stay another two weeks. <laughs> Ironically, mm. I, I, I went home early, around the 20th. And I thought, oh, I had a lot of time. And before you could know, and it was time to start coming back. Uh, it was quick. It went. It mm. went. So I, I'm not just the only one echoing that sentiment. Oh, thank God, because I didn't even say it, so that they don't think this <laughs> man is so lazy, you know. But it's yeah. good to be back at work. Yes, it's it's good to be back. And like um, you said earlier in the show, the year has kicked off. Time waits for nobody. As in today is um, the 16th. By the end of next week, January is gone, <laughs> and 2020 is full, full on. Very full. You yeah. know, so before you know it, this year we would also be. Bringing jingle bells, <laughs> December 2020. Yeah, that is why it's so essential. Time waits for nobody. Exactly. As human beings, as individuals, as businesses, we should, you know, attend to all our stuff very seriously. Oh, always have a plan, stick to it, and kick kick off. As in, I I think one of the key things people try um, and one against is procrastination or thinking you have all the time in the world. Before you know it, you're running around. And um, I think quite a number of times they say Nigerians have a last minute um, approach to yes. everything. And mm -hmm. I think mayb maybe it's because we don't really, <coughs> let me say, put a lot of weight on the fact that time keeps going. And then nobody's going to sit back and wait for you to get all your stuff ready and then come to that. So the year has started. And if you've had plans, or if you've had goals for, for this year, I think you should kick off and not wait for some sort of everything to mm. be in place. Just start mm. and things will fall And don't pray for things to change. <laughs> <laughs> just by just yeah. by not praying without just praying working. There. Yeah, that's not, that's not going to that. Yeah, but I think <laughs> you, you <laughs> have to do the work yourself. You, you have, have to, to do the work. You have to make it happen yeah. if you want it to happen. Yes. And, uh, of course, we're a very religious country. You do, you, you do your own bit, do yeah. the work, and God will bless. Yeah, but God has to see a work to bless. To bless, yeah. You know? yeah. So it's nice to be back. And yeah, it is. Let's keep pushing. Um, part of what NOI did, 
Of course, we follow a lot of your surveys. Thanks. Um, for this year, Nigerians expect improvements in different sectors. Why did you go out to do this survey in the first place? So we, we conduct this survey on an annual basis because we feel that um, the beginning of every year is like a time for people to reset, as in realign your priorities and try to decide which areas you think didn't work well the previous year and where you need to focus your energy on. So we do this every, every year. And um, of course, the findings keep on changing depending on what is on the poll, as in what is on the polls of people. And um, this year was no exception, anyway. We normally conduct this polls towards the last week of December so that people have enough time to kind of reflect on, on 2019 and say where we need to, oh, this can continue this way going into the new, new year. Mm. So what did you find out? Well, um, so the question was, which three areas do you think the government should focus more in 2020? And not surprisingly, because if you've gone through some of the polls we've done in the past, you can un understand or even follow what's going on in the country. You can understand where people are, 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 are being pinched the most. And as without, um, and of course, people identified economy, job creation, and power as the three top places that um, the government should focus on in 2020. Um, economy understandably because things are not looking great. Uh, we have a VAT increase which is going to affect the prices of things. We have, um, well I know we're going to talk about this down the line, we have electricity tariff that is going to increase and the border closures do have effects on the broader scope or on the broader cost of things. So people actually anticipate a lot of prices going up and there isn't enough cushion or things for people to kind of cushion that. So uh, a lot of people are complaining, uh, a lot of people have a lot of issues with the economy and it's understandable why job creation uh, that that has been that actually has been recurrent for the past three years that we ha we have been doing that and according to the nigerian bureau of statistics data unemployment rate is actually on the increase i, I haven't seen data on 2019 but in 2018 between the last uh, quarter two and quarter three there was an increase in um in unemployment um rate and then of course power power has been a perennial problem for us in this country and you can't expect small and medium scale businesses to grow if they don't have adequate power to do that if if most of the profit coming out into of your business goes into generating power for yourself then you're not going to be able to break even mm. aside from these top three some other places were mentioned like education infrastructure healthcare agri and, um, and security but these three economy job creation and um, power were the top three you know th this top three still revolves around the larger economy yeah. broadly because yeah, everything true. can still be categorized exactly yes. the economy even the agriculture mm -hmm. so you see that the economy takes a, hu yeah. a huge chunk or takes a major space in the mind of nigerians mm -hmm. they need this economy to to be better when you went on that survey um what apart from the results what was like what were the sentiments of people generally? Because, you know, I know what it takes when you want to go do a survey yeah. and all of that. Some may not even answer. Some may be more like, come on, you don't take away, we don't they talk this thing. For yeah. benefit of my viewers to understand what I mean. <laughs> you, know, you understand what I'm yeah, saying? I do. So I what do. were yes. the some sentiments of people? So, uh, and, and thank were you Were they very angry, thank upset? You. Thank you very much for that question. Because I think a lot of times, and this is kind of what I talked through, in my as when we discuss this poll a lot of time we just look at the numbers and don't look at the context or when people talk about this i did have a conversation once with someone who asked how do nigerians i mean how do you get people to respond and frankly speaking nigerians have a lot to say as in so it's not uh, of course it's difficult but it's not as difficult to get people to talk people have a lot to say about the situations that they are um, that they are facing um as in like i said the question was um, which top three areas? Economy was across everybody's um, mind, even though whether it was first, second, or third. But everybody kept on happening about economy. And it, at some point, some of our analysts that conducted the polls came back and were like, people were really, as in there was a very palpable uh, emotion. Yeah, I don't want to call <laughs> it <laughs> anger, but let's just say <laughs> emotion towards um, how they feel the economy, the direction they feel the economy is heading towards. A lot of people complain things are just going to be increasing and we don't have, there as in the main thing is that people are not saying do not 
try to generate revenue for government, do not do, um, do not review your, your prices. But the point is that there is no comfort zone for the common man to kind of see, okay, how am I going to cope with, um, with this? Um, yes, the minimum wage, actually one of the, I, I remember this episode when we did the review from the polls, one, uh, one person was like, they kept on saying they are increasing um, minimum, minimum wage. wage, they are increasing minimum wage. But it seems as if they're just giving you money to just give back to, uh, to, to, to government. So, so you're not really feeling any um, benefit from the so-called increase in minimum wage. Um, Nigerians are a lot of, most of the, um, most people are, what's the word? Um, you know, when you're, when you anticipate, people are afraid, I don't, are afraid of the future in terms mm. of the economy. People are worried, okay. people are concerned. I think at the word is okay. people are concerned of how they're going to be able to fund the next period of time or go through uh, what things, uh, as in like, the people anticipate that things are going to, price is going to go up and they're not going to be able to afford it. And mm -hmm. they can't see pointers or they can't see where all this is heading towards. Um, when you were taking the polls, in the midst of the concern and the emotions with which Nigerians uh, exhibited, were they hopeful that 2020 will be better? Um, unfortunately, they were not. Mm. Majority of people were, there was a lot of despair. There was a lot of um, helpless, as in like, it is what it is, you know. One, I, I, you know, the average Nigerian is a very um, hopeful person, is a very optimistic person. So yes, there was a lot of, um, I, I'm going to use this, last, last will be fine, yeah, you know. last, last. <laughs> will be fine. But I think um, there was a lot of, like, resignation, you know, to us, well, what, I mean, it is what it is, you know. So there weren't a lot of, like, okay, maybe, maybe, because I think sometimes people, people always try to see opportunity when this kind of things happen, but we didn't get a lot of that from our, from our responses. There were lots of, like, um, things are just going to go up, and we're just going to see how it goes. Mm. Is that a dangerous path? Especially not for Nigerians, but perhaps for the government. And when I mean the government, I'm not just talking about President Buhari. Yeah, of course. Take it out. President Buhari is just central. We have 36 state governments Governors. as well as uh, <coughs> FCT. Yeah. So uh, aren't we also treading a dangerous path in terms of um, perhaps has the government even calibrated the emotions? Because was it last week or so, I, I did a program on emotional stability and achieving business success. Go watch it on YouTube in case you didn't see that show. Very interesting, and I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. In terms of, do you think that government should also calibrate the emotions of the citizenry? You know, do, do you understand what I, I'm saying? I, I, Say, I, this is I, what I, our people need. Mm -hmm. What's your policy? You may be bringing out this policy. Your people may be s wanting something else. Absolutely. I, I think... After all, yeah. the Nobel uh, laureate in economics, Paul Krugman, yeah. did say economics is about people. Yeah, it's not about numbers. numbers. True. Yeah. True. I, I absolutely. I think we... I, th I, think, um, it's I think it's high time that people's opinions are factored into policies that come out. As in like over the past year, 2019, we've done quite a number of polls that are reactionary, as are based on people's reactions to policies that, um, that come out. You wake up one morning, there's a new policy, nobody really thinks how that affects um, you. I'm just gonna throw one back. Um, <coughs> the issue between JAMB and, um, mm, the, and the name, mean. you know, as in like people didn't, as put they didn't think. Think, as in people didn't put into consideration the fact that you have a bunch of young people trying to prepare for an exam that is going to determine their future. And then they're going to stand in the line to try and get um, registered without, as in like, so, 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 as in like, I think it's high time that. Then they came back and said, no, 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 no need again. Those that wasted their time doing that, oh, come on. As in, I think it's high time that we factor in how people react to these things that we do. And you, s you, you ask whether it's a dangerous thing. I think it is because I've op always believed that Nigerians are optimist, optimists. And if we're getting to a point where people are no longer hopeful for a better tomorrow, then you won't be able to motivate people to do anything to change their current situation. You're going to just have a country that's just going to be going along as in, flo as in floating along without people being ginger to kind of take decisions or do some things proactive for their own situations. So 
we need to find a way to engage the people before we come up with decisions that are going to affect them. Um, again, going back to that, uh, to the National Identity Management Commission, the, when they came up with the renewal of the of the cards, I think that was a what had they say cart before the horse mm -hmm. thing. People have registered, haven't gotten the cards, and then you're coming to talk about um, renewal. So I think we do <coughs> we do a lot of things in this country without factoring how the people are going to react to it, and we should change it. Mm. It's I don't know. As we start the year, I think governments should also start on a good foot. Of yeah. course, the finance bill is out. Mm -hmm. It's been debated in many quarters. I have done shows. I think I did two shows or three shows on it. Go check yeah. YouTube in case you didn't <laughs> see it. Um, hope is a very essential commodity or a currency which yeah. any nation should have, especially for its people. Because when a people becomes hopeless, yes. you see a lot of young people, they are leaving the country. A lot of people, the suicide rate in Nigeria now is high. And that's one thing <laughs> nobody's talking about. The depression, the mental health, you're a doctor, mm -hmm. definitely. You know <laughs> what I'm talking about. So it's very, very essential at this point that the government, you know, Our takes Our dynamics have yeah. changed in this country. Our mm -hmm. dynamics have changed in this country. I'm sure you would, growing up, you wouldn't think that things like suicide, things like exactly. we're going to be norm in Nigeria. Yes, we have a lot of mental health issues that people don't really take care, people don't really... Um, put into consideration, yeah. you know. But as in like, if you were telling me that su suicide rate in Nigeria is going to go up, as in I would have doubted that. But like you said, it's high time that we think of how the direction the country is going to affect the common citizen. Mm. Because those are the things that keep people hopeful for a better future. If you see, there's a, there's a, if you see, if you continue to see light at the end of the tunnel, then you're, you're more likely to keep going, try, trying to get yeah. to the end. But if, if everything about in front of you is all bleak, it takes a strong person to be able to continue. A very strong person. Moving forward. And perhaps that's when a lot of Nigerians turn to God or to prayer. I'm not saying it's bad, yeah. mm -hmm. because I also turn to God. <laughs> but you yeah. understand what I'm saying. Like perhaps where the government inefficiencies are too many, mm -hmm. people will like, just like you said, last, last, let's just face God. And see her. But I, I always say this. Yes, we, we, we're a very religious nation and we turn to God a lot. But God has to see something to work with. As in, has to see something to bless. As in, like, you don't wake up in the morning and expect food to be on your table, you know. As in, no matter how God wants to give you that food, you have to go out and go get it. So I think we still need to, as in, I, I think the government should consider the areas mm. where it is pinching people and try to d put some alleviating factors on those. Mm. I also, I don't want to sound as the government spokesman or spokesperson, but I also know there are some times that government can go out with policies, having in mind that those policies will be it good for the people, people. <coughs> though the people may be against it. There are, there are ways or, you know, there are certain uh, uh, areas that the government can do that. But the majority of policies of government should, fav should fav favor uh, the yeah. citizens. Yeah. Now, looking at this, your survey. Of course, anyone has been doing survey for quite a while. Do you engage, especially those that need to see this, those that need to read it, those that need to hear it? I know they are hearing it now. Yeah, because the government yeah. is watching. <laughs> those, they need to see it, the numbers and all of that. Uh, absolutely, we do. We don't have, as in, well, depending on the, on the poll, we we don't have like a big dissemination event. Some polls will call for big dissemination events, which we, we, we do. But we send out these findings to government agencies, send them out to particular ministries that are, um, that are of note. And we also try to engage people. We do a lot of television, sorry, um, radio shows to publicize the poll and we invite um, experts in the area, both from the government side and both from the, um, from the civil society to just kind of give a balanced view to, to, to people. So yes, we do, we do that. Now, do you think that, not just NOI, yeah. but talking about civil society, talking <coughs> about um, think tanks that really look at some of those areas that government needs to concentrate on, do you think that the government really take, takes notes of some of those things I we talk about. Do. Do you, uh, I, I don't know if you understand. Like yeah, for me I, now, I've been on there for years. I've been saying the same thing, saying the same thing, saying the same Okay, our budget cycle has changed generally to the same. But you'll be saying the same thing. Oh, all price, all price, or less <laughs> diversity. I've been saying it for almost, come on. 
Do, do you understand yeah, what no, I'm I trying do. to say? I, I really hope they do. And um, not just this government. So, so in the yeah. past, as in like, and this is from me, from my from my background, work, previous work experience, you find out that a lot of times people just take an inductal evidence from other places and just come and say this is going to work in Nigeria. Where and then the common thing is, oh, we don't have data. But we do have data. People don't pay attention to what we oh, really? what we have. You know, as in you come up with things that. Okay, this worked in this country, this worked in that country, and I think it should work in Nigeria without factoring in whether that it's, I mean, our context is very, very different. Our context is very different. Coming from a health background, you have people trying to implement programs that were done in a country like Ethiopia in Nigeria in exactly the same way that it was done. But it's not going to work because um, you have, you're talking of a country that is like one half of Nigeria's um, Mm -hmm. population not as diverse as Nigeria is so I think and I really do echo your thoughts on I hope the government takes into account some of these um, findings and use it as some form of basis for whatever they decide to do I agree that government policies should be pro people but how those po and sometimes people are going to kick back mm -hmm. as in change is not even always a welcome yeah, even if yeah. it's good for them you should engage them let mm -hmm. them know um, what it's for. Again, just uh, I, I'm using this as, a, as an example a lot. The NIMSI card, I personally believe is, is a good thing good to thing, have. Yeah. I to personally have an believe identification it has, it has a lot of advantage, yeah. you know. But if you ask people what are the advantages of this card, I don't think anybody will be able to tell you. And if you've been able to produce some of these cards, give it out to people, let people use it and see the advantage, it's going to be easier for people to defend when talks like this um, as in come up, you know, that, as in, so I think that the, 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 the way things are being introduced should, should, should change, yes. Let's go to another mm, sticky area <laughs> in Nigeria, power supply, your uh, survey, what did it tell you? So we, we run monthly polls on power supply um, to just get an idea of how many hours of light you get and then of course at the end of the year we kind of um, analyze it and just kind of show the trend and um, power has been a recurrent problem in this country I as a, like I'm not I mean uh, I, I, it, it's not my sector but I keep on wondering what is the roadblock what is the problem that every body that has gone into that ministry and come out hasn't been able to to solve our polls have been consistent First quarter, last quarter, improvement in light. Second quarter, third quarter, we have um, we have a drop. So you keep on wondering, is there something that happens during these two quarters that is on insurmountable that keeps on reoccurring? On the average, we found that in on the average in Nigeria, people experience 9.5 hours of light in a day. Mm. That is not going to help us grow the economy that we are really concerned um, about, and. Um, when you look across for the past, uh, like I said, we've been doing this for a while. In, 20, um, in, in 2016, power supply was about 8.5. It increased in 2017 to 9.7. But it has dropped back to 9.5 in 2018 and 9.5 in 2019. So we just keep on um, mm -hmm. moving. And uh, if you look across, uh, this is really around this range across uh, every, I mean, for over the periods that we've looked at them, there hasn't been any point where oh, it has increased. And I must say, bef as in when people, this is an average power supply. So the fact that we say it's 9.2 it doesn't mean that every single, single. person there gets. Are some, there are some there areas are some people that, that don't, don't get have, at yes, all. Darkness. And there are some places that enjoy 23, four, yes, 24 four hours, hours light. Yeah. But, but on the average, it's 9.2. Um, and that is really, that's not help, gonna help us um, at all. In some of our conversations, people keep on trading blames from Jankos to Discos to Mac to whoever, as in like whoever you want to call, even consumers as well. So, and I think we should stop the blame game and try and focus on identifying where these challenges um, challenges are. Discos have talked about their capacity to uh, to distribute light. They've complained about people not being able to pay for the light that they receive. Jenkins have country has have have commented that they they as in like schools don't even pay for the ones that they generate. Mm. So, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry. So who exactly should be in charge of this? Um, and uh, I think everything falls back to NEC, right? Because you're the regulatory um, agency, you should be able to identify where these um, challenges are and try and do something about them. Mm. Okay, let me just um, you know. 
So what are Nigerians expecting for power supply in 2020? Are they seeing light at the end of the tunnel? Um, oh, no, just say not more, not say more. No, no. Uh, again, we've, um, we've engaged a lot of people on this um, power pool to kind of um, understand if people can unearth what these issues are. We have consumer protection advocate yeah. groups that have really tried to identify some of these issues. There have been issues around um, load shedding. There have been issues around unaccounted pa power. For example, um, for example, the, the Janko said they generate about 3,000 something megawatts, while the discos only pay for 1,100. So you have about 2,000 megawatts that is unaccounted, um, unaccounted for. There's this whole issue about estimated billing. billing. And mm -hmm. I, I think at this point, we shouldn't be talking about estimated billing. We should be, as in it shouldn't be a thing. And we all know, without getting to find it, as we all know the reasons why estimated bill is still, a, is still a thing, because people use it to meet targets that they otherwise would not have met if they were going to use the metered bill. Um, there have been issues about how long it takes to get bill, as in get meters, and we've been told that meters are available. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, there are a mm -hmm. lot of issues, uh, as in, um, do Nigerians expect things to change? Uh, unfortunately, again, this was one of the polls that didn't have, didn't come up, come out with a lot of optimism from people that things are going to be different, and that's understandable, given that it's the same trend. We're in January now, and we're experiencing a little bit better light supply. Uh, when we get to April, it's all going to go down the hill, and then the cycle keeps on um, re reoccurring. Okay, as we end the program, do you have any advice for Nigerians <coughs> for 2020? I know I'm asking that question, and I'm taking you, perhaps you should just take away your hat. Uh, okay, put on your NOI poll hat. Put on your medical doctor hat. Put on all other hats. Is there any advice for our viewers watching us uh, for 2020? As someone that is there in the field and, you know, um, once there's life, there's hope. Mm. We have to keep on being hopeful that we're going to get it right in this country. I mean, Nigeria is our country, is our, it's the only one we have. So we have to keep on being hopeful that we're going to get it right. But I think what we need to do better in 2020 as Nigerians is to hold people accountable. We have to focus on accountability. Forget this uh, sentiment, focus on accountabilities of people that we give the power to move on in the right, to move us in the right um, direction. In the course of my work with NOI polls, we found that people don't really believe that they can hold um, political officers um, accountable. And I think that is a sad thing to do. You have the power to put them there, so you should have the power to remove them if they don't do well. So I think going forward, Nigerians should try and hold people accountable for the things that they are supposed to do that they have not mm -hmm. um, done. And I think that's the, 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 the one thing I'm going to say that I'm going to do differently this, this year. year. Mm, holding people more accountable. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you, Nancy, as Thank always. You. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, I've been speaking with Dr. Chike Wanwu, the 